Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're here in the F-14. We're dogfighting the Super Hornet, the F-18 Super Hornet. And those of you with a keen eye will notice that we are over a new map, which was recently released. We're doing a split S against the Super Hornet here. We are over the Sinai map. Very beautiful night lighting in this map. Probably the best I've ever seen, actually. Anyway, we can admire the map later. We have a Super Hornet here today who obviously is going to favor the one circle fight. The Hornet being one of the greatest one circle fighters of all time. Uh, the F-14 has little chance but to go two circle and try to keep my speed up because he's going to be theoretically slow. Although right now he is in a two circle with me. You can see him dumping his nose trying to bring it around one circle. Just going to try to avoid that and not let him do that. Took my eyes off him for a second and already lost him in the clutter. Here he goes. He's over here, actually. Keep an eye on him here. You see, you see that doing that turn reversal? That might give me a shot here. Lucky to be alive. We're going to go into the vertical to avoid the overshoot. Now, before anybody asks why he's dropping flares, this is just good practice. When you realize that you're within an IR WES, you drop some flares, even though you know it's a guns only fight. It's just good practice to do that because, you know, if you're going to cross his nose, he's going to shoot a fox 2 at you theoretically. If you drop the flares, you're uh, you're training your brain to identify those IR wezes, know when you're crossing the nose, drop flares as needed. Um, look at him trying to point his nose here. We got lots of separation here, so I'm not worried about him taking a shot. I am trying to keep him in a two-circle fight vertically, it looks like. A little bit of a vertical component here. This vertical loop fight is by its very nature a two circle fight. Just whenever you're chasing his tail and he's chasing yours, it's a two circle fight. Let's see if we can pull him into the hut here and take a shot at him actually, no. And I had to pull hard there to make that happen. He saw that, I think he thought I was a lot slower than I was so he, he uh, reversed his turn there. And although I did bleed some energy to try to pull him into the hut, I didn't bleed that much. So I can still stay with him in this fight. Trying not to just pull him into the HUD, although it's tempting. You see a Hornet, you see him slow in front of you, you just want to pull him in and shoot him. The Hornet very good at its slow speed maneuverability, so even when the Hornet's super slow, that thing can still kind of jink. And like move around and make it difficult to get a gunshot on him. Ooh, very close rounds there. Look at this, he's going to try to reverse. He's going to try to point his nose at me here, watch this. Look at that, he's dumping that nose. He's trying to line me up, so we're gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up, climb over his nose. No thank you, sir. And then right from here, I'm just gonna ditch that two circle. Cause he, uh, in order to try to pull me in there, he, you know, bled a lot of his energy. He had to pull hard there. And to go into the vertical after something like that is an interesting choice. That means he had a little bit more energy than I thought he did. Just continuing to be patient here. The guns only fight is really good for, you know, practicing your fundamental understandings of BFM. Come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah, hit his tail. Hey, I mean, I hit something. I'm pretty sure it was his tail. Keeping an eye on him here. Through the uh, ground clutter, it does make it difficult to maintain visual. So if you're having trouble keeping an eye on that F-18, it's okay. Um, I'm having the same issue. <laughs> and as he sees the uh, nose come around, he starts dropping flares. And I'm going to line him up here. He's missing a part of his tail, you can see. I'm just going to walk these tracers on. Oh, I missed. We're going vertical, he's going to try to shoot. Yeah, it was a good effort. But he's super slow there, so I went into the vertical, because I know I'm safe here. He can't climb, 
because I saw how slow he was. I'm going to drop that nose back down on top of him and try to kill him now. So you see a lot of the moves that you make have to be dependent on your bandit's energy state. We have him here. We got him locked. His lift vector placement is off. Looks like he doesn't have a good visual. And I don't think he saw me there. I think he lost visual. You saw him rolling the aircraft. He's trying to look around. He's trying to look for me. <laughs> Bet he saw me when all those tracers started coming in. Now we've talked about in the past how good of a dogfighter the Hornet is, extremely forgiving aircraft uh, in terms of like when you're new your instinct is to just constantly pull the bandit into the HUD which in my opinion the Hornet is the most forgiving for that because it's already a one circle fighter so if you constantly pull the bandit into the HUD it's not a good thing to do but it's much more makes a lot more sense in the Hornet than it does say an F-16. Generally, when you're a one-circle fighter, you're constantly trying to point your nose at the bandit. You know, within reason. There's a time and a place for everything, of course. Uh, but generally, a two-circle fighter is going to try to keep you in an assessment window right up until the point that he wants to kill you. This will be a head-on pass. And then once he his attack cues are met, that's when he will pull you into the HUD and kill you. Uh, the one-circle fighter may often try for snapshot opportunities. So they are just going to constantly try to point their nose at you and try to take those snapshots. We've got to avoid his nose here. Yeah, saw that coming. Now I don't know how many of you noticed my indecisive turn in the last turn and what what that's going to do is it's going to create, it created too much separation which is what allowed him to get that gunshot at me um, and it's actually what has now allowed him to become offensive on me. So a little indecisiveness has now led to me being completely defensive against the Hornet because I sacrificed way too many degrees and I don't, here you go, I saw him. I was going to say, I don't have visual on him. And he's very, very much got my six here. And it's extremely difficult to make a Hornet overshoot. These things are... Ooh, yeah, that I had to work hard for that one. It still didn't work. I brought him in close, but he's still back there. I'm trying to roll with him. Differential thrust here to try to get the overshoot if possible. Ah, yeah, got hit. He hit me with something. 20 millimeter for sure. I think it hit the wing. And look at this. He's right back. I can't get him off me. It's over. I think it's game over here. He's doing a good job uh, maintaining his closure. I'm trying to build some half and pull into him. Yeah, I lost too much airspeed. Yeah. Ooh. Good kill. A very good kill. I gave it all I had <laughs> to try to get him off me, and I couldn't do it. See, once the bandit has your six, you have to get very lucky to defeat him. And if he manages his closure, you know, you're never going to defeat him. So, good kill. Great kill. One last fight, 
for those of you who are always going on that you want the longer videos. <laughs> I don't mind doing it with the F-14 because it's a tremendous amount of fun to dogfight in this thing, so. I, I always like the added challenge of the F-14. You know, it doesn't hold your hand and I enjoy that, so I don't mind doing another fight. Let's do one more here um, into the merge. He gave me tremendous amounts of turning room there. I know I already brought this up, but you have to admit, this night lighting is insane. It's so good. The city looks beautiful, man. I don't know how they did this versus other maps, but it's extremely impressive. All right, I got him uh, off the nose here. Look at that. He's pretty fast. That is one fast hornet. Which is an interesting decision for somebody who's gonna, who's gonna try to keep you one circle. Or maybe he's trying to do my fight. The Hornet can absolutely do the same fight. Very capable of one circle and two circle fighting. Being extra cautious here because you know, people learn your style. They learn how you dogfight and they try to exploit your mistakes. And, you know, you do it to them as well, of course. You start to realize, like, oh, this guy, he's pretty good. He'll do one circle well, he'll do two circle, two circle well, but if I take him into the vertical, he struggles, right? You learn that about him. Gotta avoid the nose here. So then you start favoring the vertical. Avoid that nose again. Oh, he took a blind shot there. He put, he allowed his nose to go over me and he assumed I would come out in front and I didn't. And that's a pretty critical mistake because that means he didn't maneuver in relation to me for a few seconds there. So I'm gonna try to lure him into that two circle fight now. Because he is slow. Oh, oh, ah, he got me. All right. Good hit. You gotta watch that hornet nose, man. That thing will point at you from almost anywhere. I kind of forgot about that in that split second there. Once again, he's going to try to point the nose. I'm going to try to slide under. He's going to try to point it. I'm going to jink and... Got lucky. I made it hard for him, really. That's all it was. Now I got him in a vertical fight just because I felt like maybe he's slow. So I'm just going to try to keep him in that vertical fight. You can see he's trying to avoid it. He didn't have the energy to climb through that. So he just ended up reversing the turn. I'm not going to take the bait on him, even though I'm well within my rights to pull him into the HUD there and take a shot at him. I feel like maybe we could have got away with that, but that's fine. I'm just going to be patient. I'm just going to climb over and pull to his high six. Look at this. Now I'm offensive on a Hornet, and he's in big trouble. Now I can pull him into the HUD from here. Let's see what we can do from here. Okay, almost, almost. Did a good job neutralizing. Watch this. I'm going to avoid him here. He's going to try to lure me into a one circle, and I'm going to ditch. When he's at the top of his pull, I'm going to leave. Look at that. He's trying to roll me. No, I'm out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> he's slow at the top. I'm going two circle. Of all the places to exit, you know, it might be when he's slow and at the top of his pull. Um, now I am, the only problem here is that that Hornet can still point its nose. That thing will point the nose at very slow speeds. So I'm just trying to beat, yeah, look at that. Saw that coming. Didn't I say that? I knew he was going to go for that. My six. Yeah. Oh yeah, he got me. Oh, come on, Tomcat, don't let me down. Come on, girl. Come on. Reverse that turn. Where is he? Where'd he go? <laughs> oh, that's not good. Where is he? Uh, okay, there he goes. Underneath. Nice. No, oh, we got the overshoot. But uh, he, he crossed my nose there, but I couldn't get rounds on him. We're still in this fight. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Dipped underneath me. I don't think he realizes his afterburner is still in. Or maybe he does, because he just ditched out to the two circle. But he was trying to one circle fight me with his afterburner still in. And that's not a good move. He can't escape. Not even the Tomcats knows. He sees it coming. He's going to try to jink. A couple rounds on him. Now if I just manage my closure, he's as good as dead. If I just don't screw this up. Nice and easy. He's still an afterburner. Lost that tail. There's so many things for him to be paying attention to. It takes people, sometimes people, they forget that, you know, he's got to drop the flares, he's got to build aspect, he's got a nose counter. He's got a hundred things to do. And he's uh, forgot that he has his afterburner in. Which is keeping him out in front of me, which is beautiful. If I had, I could go for a Fox 2 shot right now. I could. I have already hit him, so I, I could do that. Yeah, look at that. He took the afterburner out. <laughs> It's too late though. Yeah, I got him. Well, he's actually still alive, but he is very damaged. Alright, I'm gonna try to roll over on top of him. You can never write the Hornet off, although I bet he's got some pretty big structural damage, so he can't pull G's. Oh, there you go. Broke his wing. That's exactly what happened there. And he ejected. So I guess he put like two or three G's on it trying to pull into me and it snapped that wing right off. It was already damaged by the gun hits. Alright, well that's a Splash 1 Hornet. A great fight.